Every day, more than 100,000 tons of glass are produced around the world. Only the United States consumes millions of tons per year. To supply this enormous demand, millions of tons of sand must be processed. But how is this fine powder transformed into one of the most used materials in the world? In this video, we will discover how glass is made by melting silica sand. Modern civilization could not live without it. This marvel of engineering is everywhere. It's an essential part of buildings, cars, and smartphones. Although it seems fragile, it can be surprisingly strong. When reinforced, it can withstand extreme temperatures, high pressures, and even violent impacts thanks to its incredible resistance. Glass is one of the most widely used materials in construction. But it wasn't until 300 BC that glass was accidentally discovered by the ancient Egyptians. Glass was formed when they heated silica sand together with sodium carbonate near a fire. This mixture accidentally produced a glassy substance. At first, glass was mainly used as decoration in the form of jewelry and small amulets. But by the late 19th century, glassmakers created something spectacular, a luminous, translucent glass. At that time, glass production was a complicated and expensive process. Glass was made in large furnaces and poured onto flat surfaces, but the process was slow, inefficient, and produced many imperfections. Everything changed in 1959 when Alastair Packington invented the float glass process. This system allows flat glass to be manufactured continuously, floating the molten glass on a layer of liquid tin. Thanks to this innovation, it became possible to produce perfectly smooth and transparent glass on a large scale and at low cost. But how is silica sand obtained? This fine powder is one of the most abundant resources on Earth, but not all sand is suitable for silica extraction. In some places, such as the large mines in Brazil, the deposits are in hard rock veins several hundred meters underground. The only way to extract it is with a truckload of explosives. The team drills 11 meters to place the charges inside the rock. Their main weapon is ammonium nitrate mixed with fuel. It's powerful and easy to place. To ensure it detonates, they link each 60 kilo charge with two and a half kilos of a powerful explosive. When everything is ready, the chief blaster gives the order to detonate. After the explosion, the sand rocks are released, and once the dust settles, the operators go into action with their excavators. With several excavators and loading trucks, they collect the sand. In a short time, thousands of tons can be extracted. The ore is transported to the processing plant, where the silica sand will be refined for industrial use. This is where the purification process begins. The powder contains impurities like clays and organic materials that must be removed. That's why it's taken to large washing tanks, where it's mixed with hot water to separate the unwanted particles. After this initial wash, the sand goes through a drying process in huge dryers. The powder is subjected to high temperatures to remove moisture and any remaining small impurities. Once dry, it's loaded into one-ton bags and sent to the glass factory. It's the largest glass factory in the United States, and every week it receives more than 5,000 tons of silica sand. Huge silos store the key ingredients of glass. Every day, more than 700 metric tons are fed into the process. Along with the sand, sodium carbonate and calcium carbonate are mixed in. These components modify the structure of the silica sand, lower its melting point, and allow the mixture to melt more easily. Calcium carbonate is used to improve the strength of the glass. A magical ingredient is added, leftover glass from previous batches. Adding recycled glass speeds up the melting process. Pigments are responsible for giving color to the glass mixture. In this case, cobalt oxide provides that characteristic blue tone that stands out in certain types of glass. Once all the ingredients are ready, they are poured into a double chamber mixer. Inside this machine, the materials flow from one end to the other, ensuring the mixture is thoroughly combined. Once the materials have been perfectly mixed, they are deposited into a giant gas-fired furnace, where the temperature reaches an impressive 1,650 degrees Celsius, much higher than molten lava. The furnace operator takes control at this point, carefully introducing the mixture into one of the crucibles. Once everything is in place, the crucible mouth is closed to maintain absolute control over the temperature and the melting process. Inside the plant, 
Operators must protect themselves with fireproof suits and Kevlar gloves. The heat is extreme, and the work is intense. As the molten mixture cooks at extremely high temperatures, every movement must be done carefully and precisely to ensure the quality of the glass. Operators use metal rakes to stir the molten mixture. The goal is to eliminate air bubbles that form during melting. Although the bubbles may seem small, their presence is dangerous as they can completely ruin the final product, affecting its transparency and strength. 24 hours later, the mixture no longer looks like sand and begins to flow like lava. What shines at the bottom of the furnaces is liquid glass, a viscous mass that has reached the perfect temperature and consistency. Over the next few hours, the glass remains molten, allowing any remaining gas in the mixture to be released, ensuring the material is as pure as possible. The 12 crucibles in the furnace have the capacity to hold different colors of molten glass. Each of these crucibles can handle up to 270 kilos of liquid glass, allowing for a wide variety of products and colors in production. When the glass is ready, the team acts quickly. Workers extract the molten, glowing glass from the crucibles. With just a few seconds to act, they must quickly transfer it to the mixing table. The glass is kept in constant motion to prevent it from cooling unevenly, which could affect its quality. The process is so precise and fast that any delay could result in defective glass with cold spots or imperfections. It's important to cool the ladles between each use, or the next batch will stick to the metal. These ladles vary in size and can hold between 2 and 18 kilos of molten glass to create a single color. Sometimes up to five different ladles are poured at once. And here's where the real art comes in. At the mixing table, the magic happens. The operator picks up an incandescent mass and skillfully mixes it using a steel fork. It takes years of experience and a good eye. Mixing too much creates dull colors. The key is to achieve just the right blend. Next, the molten glass is deposited into a roller machine, where it undergoes a process that flattens it evenly as it passes between them. These specialized rollers apply the necessary pressure for the glass to stretch and flatten into a thin, uniform sheet. The operator carefully separates the sheet from the table while making sure to eliminate any trapped air bubbles that might have remained during the stretching process. The result is a perfect glass sheet. Next, it's placed in an annealing oven where it's hardened and gradually cooled to prevent cracks. The glass is now hard enough and is taken to be cut. Once cooled, the glass sheet moves to the cutting room, where it's trimmed to the required size. There, workers protected with special clothing and thick gloves handle the sharp edges, still hot to the touch. Each crucible produces about 25 sheets in 24 hours, which equals around 300 sheets daily per furnace. Cutting the sheets is a delicate task that requires the coordination of two people with a cutter tip with ultra-resistant tungsten carbide. The workers score the surface of the glass and then separate the pieces, obtaining standard sheets of 81 by 81 centimeters. The leftovers are saved to be melted again in future batches. The sheets are packed in wooden crates ready to be shipped worldwide. Give this video a like if you enjoyed it and share it with someone who might be interested. Also, subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications to keep learning.